Hello everybody, guess what? You're watching the P and the V, the political vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. This article was submitted. Oh wait, first before that, let's get some graphics moving in here. Look at that, boom, making Gotham great again. This article was submitted by Patreon supporter Adam Martin. Please go to my patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. The link is in the show notes below. YouTube has uh, cut my money way back, and so I very much need Patreon to keep the show moving. And I wanna do more stuff. We got the big fancy studio. I wanna hire a full-time producer. Right now I have a part-time. She does a fantastic job, but it's just, uh, I need someone that can even spend even more time than just posting the videos. So help me out with that. And also make sure you are subscribed. YouTube is unsubscribing people. So even subscribe, hit the bell notification button and like the videos and push them out on your social media. So this is the article that was submitted by Patreon supporter Adam Martin. Global warming double whammy may be steering Florence into the Carolinas, says the researcher. So Florence has just hit the Carolina coast. It's been, you know, pretty severe. And we also just had in the Philippines a 200 mile an hour tsunami with 200 mile an hour winds. And I read a report that that's the most severe, that is the most severe winds that have ever been recorded. So one of the things I've talked about on this show, and this, this article is very extensive and it's in thinkprogress.org and the link is in the show notes below. So please check it out. As we've said, how Climate change doesn't create hurricanes, it just makes them more severe. What this article is gonna show, uh, this research that has come out, that certain effects of global warming are steering um, hurricanes into the eastern seaboard of the United States. So, uh, but can a global warming actually steer a storm into a more deadly path? The growing evidence is that it can and already has by creating more powerful high pressure systems that remain almost stationary and divert a cyclone from what would have been its normal path. <laughs> How is that, right? So it is possible that the Arctic warming may have a double whammy effect that is favoring an increased frequency of blocking highs like the one that's steering Florence in a highly unusual path and like the one that did the same to Sandy, as Dr. Jennifer Francis explained to an email in Think Progress. So I'm just going to go and reference the article because I'm not a meteorologist, but one of the things that I have talked about, I remember I, I spoke with a woman, Rebecca, that works for... Um, the uh, I, I met her in Chicago and she is a meteorologist and she was telling me that meteorologists are told you know to not talk about climate change the weather channel doesn't mention it anymore you ever watch the local news the weather person never mentions climate change they're told not to by the corporate media but these are scientists dr. Jennifer Francis the high pressure system in the atmosphere, in effect, appears to be blocking the path of Hurricane Florence and instead leading it directly towards landfall rather than allowing it to veer northwards to the Atlantic. How exactly does that work? Well, <laughs> I look like a weatherman now. Folks, we're going to have some light weekends. Here's the five day outlook. <laughs> but this is what they're talking about. This is that blocking high system that goes here. So normally the storm starts out here. And if this high wasn't here, which this is, according to them, has been created by global warming, the storm would go maybe here and dissipate out here and then the eastern coast would just get a lot of heavy rains. But it's blocking it, so it is steering it right into the Carolinas. <laughs> the path of Florence has been extremely unusual as Philip uh, Klotzbeck, an American hurricane expert, tweeted on Friday. Here's a tweet, and I'll show a graphic that he tweeted. 33 named storms since 1851 have been within 100 miles of Florence's current position. None of these storms made U.S. landfall. The closest approach was Hurricane George in 1950, the highlighted track in white. Look at this. This is what he's talking about. This is Hurricane George. This is the closest it ever got. These are the different categories. 
Look at this. That's the closest it's got, 1950. So that's why Florence is so unusual and they're starting to do more research to track this. This is, uh, I showed you in the other map, there's the blocking high. So this, since 1851, the 33 storms have all followed this typical path until now because this blocking high is here. See this? That's insane. And going back to Dr. Francis, another f factor with Florence, she explained, is the massive area of much warmer than normal ocean temperatures off the eastern seaboard and of North America, which also favors these big northward jet stream sings and thus blocking highs. This is another thing I've, we've talked about. The warmer water temperature makes the storms more severe. And now this blocking high is actually steering them into the, into the east coast. Francis notes that this large pool of warm water currently sitting in the Atlantic is similar to the one seen in the Eastern Pacific that helped cause a blocking high directly linked to global warming that was also a major driver in a multi-year drought California suffered in recent years. Which California has kind of recovered from. We've had a couple decent rainy winters, but more brush fires. And here's the thing that, that, that drives me insane when like the right wing says, oh, global warming is a myth and these, these companies are just using it to profit. What, where? Where's the profit here? Is this thing, this is going to cost billions of dollars in damage. The wildfires in California, the ones we just had, $15 billion in damage. So, if you're going to just sit there and tell me, oh, it's these, these World Wildlife Federation companies just doing it to get their donations. Okay, you, you total up all those donations. You total up all those donations. It'll come within probably one one hundredth of a percent of what the oil industry makes. Because I've talked about this. So this is created by fossil fuels emissions, right? The minute the whole world recognizes this, mainly this dumb country recognizes this, and the corporate media recognizes this, that we have to do something about this because this, this is just going to crush us. This is going to get bigger and more severe, worse and worse and worse. So the Saudis make all this money from oil, which means they can buy influence, politicians all over the world, think tanks. They can buy our weapons. They get us to do all their wars in Yemen and Syria and all this crap, right? The minute everyone pays attention and recognizes this or this using research and goes, wait a minute, this is dangerous. We all, the whole world has to get off of oil right now. Saudi loses all of its power. And they didn't think ahead like Dubai did. So the bottom line as global warming alters weather patterns, weakens the jet stream, and creates more powerful blocking highs in the North Atlantic, the East Coast may, unfortunately, see more major hurricanes steer toward the land rather than away from it. Thank you, Adam Martin, for submitting this. Global warming, not a myth. We got to get information like this out here. You guys got to help support the show. Like, subscribe, share the videos, and you're all making Gotham great. Thank you so much for watching.